We're finishing up a, a sort of a brief series titled, You're Not Smarter to, Than God. You're Not Smarter Than God. I believe God prompted me. Uh, I, I planned these things months and months in advance, and I, I believe he laid this series on my heart many months ago. And, and part of it is, I would see people do things or say things that, as I'm watching it, it seemed to me like perhaps, maybe they think they're smarter than God. That was the, you know, kind of the feeling I got. For example, uh, a while back, I saw a couple of clips from uh, talk shows, nighttime talk shows, and I saw some people, and they were somehow on these, you know, nighttime comedy talk shows, they got around to talking about God. And they talked about God, some of these folks, in a way that seemed very disrespectful to me. There's almost like a, a sort of an audacity there mixed with, mixed with smugness and bluster as they're talking about God. And I get myself all riled up sometimes while I'd be like yelling at the television, you're not smarter than God, pal! And uh, my dogs are uh, coming to Christ right in that moment. <laughs> One of the ways that people sort of act as if they're smarter than God is you'll see people who, again, it just from what they're doing, from what they're saying, it seems as if they think they can fool God, like they're going to fool him somehow. Or, they, or God's going to be deceived in some way. It almost seems like people believe, like, again, from, from what they do or say, that they're maybe going to convince God of something that's not actually true. You can't do this, right? Do you know that? Say yes. Yeah. yeah. Jesus gets at this idea. He was talking on one occasion, and he was talking, to, actually he was talking about people on Judgment Day. He said, this is what's going to happen on Judgment Day. There will be people sort of like pleading their case before God, and based on what Jesus says, we're gonna, we'll read the passage in just a moment, it appears that some of these people think maybe they can, can, they can kind of deceive God or confuse him a little bit. Stand in form on Judgment Day. They're going to confuse him. Here, take the Bible that's in front of you. Turn, if you would, to the book of Matthew. We'll look out. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Matthew chapter 7. Jesus is talking here. We're going to start reading at verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Chapter 7, verse 21. The Lord Jesus is speaking in this portion of scripture, yes? yes? And again, this is, um, this is he's laying out, a, I think, a very interesting scenario, and you, you're, you kind of look at it and you think, what are these people, what do they think is going to happen? So verse 21, if you haven't, say yes. yes. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. So, you know, there's, gonna, there's always big talkers. Verse 22, here's this Judgment Day thing. On Judgment Day, many will say to me, he's got it, many, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, perform many miracles in your name, but I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. It's actually, I think, like... <coughs> An incredibly sobering passage of scripture. Almost these to me, this what Jesus lays out here is almost frightening. I mean, think about it. On Judgment Day, it's going to be people like Lord, Lord. We know each other, right? Remember, it's me. We're our good buddies. I was serving you all along. They're going to, in other words, they're going to try to convince God at that point in time. That, they, that we've got this relationship, God. We've got a relationship here. And Jesus says these people, and we're talking about the ones who actually don't have a relationship with the Lord, they're going to hear these they're terrible words, horrible words. I never knew you. Scary. These are the worst words anyone will ever hear. I don't know you. Very sobering. So, Jesus says here, this is that scenario. They're going to try and make a, oh, remember me, Jesus? We're close. And it's a reminder to us, among other things, that it's possible to kind of talk a good game, but not really know Jesus. Like, you can talk a lot about Jesus, but you don't really know him. People pretend to know him, but it's just the mouth. And believe me, I know how easy it is to just talk. I do it all the time. I, it's, 
I was looking, trying to calculate a little bit this week. I have, I have spoken hundreds and hundreds, actually over a thousand sermons and messages and talks about God and Jesus and matters of the Christian faith. You know what this passage, I read this passage, you know what it reminds me? Like I said, it's very sobering. If I stand before Jesus and I don't really know him, all of my talk, it won't cut it. Amen. Oh, Dan's a pretty good talker. Won't matter then. Matter of fact, I think there's a possibility, there, I think there's a strong possibility that there are going to be preachers who will be standing before God someday and they're going to hear these words. I don't know you. But I had a big mess of church. I don't know you. I was going around and doing... This gets my attention. <laughs> Does it get yours? I hope it gets your attention because it's not just pe preachers. You know, one of the commentaries that I looked at this week said, not everyone who talks about heaven belongs to God's kingdom. You ever hear this phrase before? Talk is cheap. You've heard that before, right? <laughs> talk is cheap. You know where that came from? Because talk is cheap. I got lots of brilliant insights like that. <laughs> that one's free. That one's completely free of charge. Yeah. Here's the deal, my dearly beloved friends. Jesus knows the truth of our hearts. Talk, we can bluster all day long. God knows the truth. And see, the truth of our hearts matters to God. That matters to God. Because everything, all the actions and everything come from the heart. Here, think about it this way. You can put it this way. Do you really love Him? Do you love God? Are you really trusting in Jesus? Not words. Well, I said some words a long time ago, but I can't. No, no, no. no. Mm -hmm. Is it true? This is between you and God. Just think about it. Is it true that you've put your faith in Christ? Not in yourself. See, if you stand before Jesus on Judgment Day, and by the way, that's going to happen, you're going to stand before him. Not me. Oh yeah, you, you. If you are standing before him and you've put your faith in yourself for salvation, I did, I did everything I needed to do to be saved, that's going to be woefully inadequate. Mm -hmm. It'll be very sad. Is your faith not in you, is it in him? See, Jesus will know the truth of your heart. Nothing is hidden from him. You can't hide it. Nobody will be able to reject Jesus all their life, live a life totally focused on their own self-interest, and then on Judgment Day think they're going to come up with some razzle-dazzle. Jesus, I love you. I love you so much. Remember all those miracles I did? Nonsense won't fool him. This is where we kind of tie into the title of the series. You're not smarter than God. Yeah, apparently Jesus, what he, based on what he tells us here, there are people who on Judgment Day, they think they're going to say something to fool God. we got a relationship, God, remember? We've got one. I don't know you. Another line from a commentary on this passage that I read this week says this, No one can ultimately deceive the God who sees the heart. But it's not just that these people, the people who don't know God, it's not just that they can talk a good game, but what Jesus indicates to us here is that it's also possible that they're folks who do religious things. They're doing things. They, and it, they're doing things that looks like God must be involved. Jesus tells us they're going to be saying, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. Perform many miracles in your name. Those are pretty impressive things to do, aren't they? If I saw somebody doing miracles, I'd be kind of impressed by that. Wow, look at that. Again, uh, one of these commentaries that I read said, there's a surprising feature about this passage. Jesus is quite ready to concede that many of the false prophets will do and say wonderful and impressive things. Wow. Another commentary said, Jesus warned us that false Christs, this is in the Bible, he said that false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to even deceive the elect, if that were possible. 
So Jesus is telling us, it's not just that there are people who can talk a good game, there will be people who will be doing things that kind of look impressive, but that brings us back then once again to the heart. What is the heart of the person? People whose hearts are far from God won't be able to fool them. Lord, remember, I did all that stuff. I did Jesus backflips right down the aisle. Oh man, it was amazing. I don't know you. Jesus is reminding us of a truth. I, I think probably everybody here, most of us here, probably, I, I think, I hope, we know this already. But we remind ourselves. God knows whether we have a heart for him or not. Jesus talked about this one time. He actually quoted Isaiah in Matthew chapter 15. Jesus said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. No one can deceive the God who knows us in every detail. You know, I describe this passage of Scripture as sobering, and I think that's a fair way to characterize it. It's sobering, but I, when I read this passage, to me it's also sad. Like there are people who, apparently, from what Jesus said, they're going to try to make a case for themselves on Judgment Day. Like now, at this point in time, they think I'm gonna, now I'm gonna make a case somehow. Remember me, Lord, I, I'm one of the good guys. And it's too late. It's too late for that then. Sad. By the way, you know that, right? You know, I, I, I think you know this. On judgment day, it's too late. You know that. See, again, this is part of why the title of the series is, you're not smarter than God. If your plan is, I'm going to ignore God, I don't care about that stuff, or reject God, do whatever I want to do. I'm going to live the way I want to live. I'm going to be the ruler and Lord of my life. If you think that's how you're going to live, and then on Judgment Day, you're going to bow the knee to Jesus, and oh, Jesus, I love you so much. Do you think you can hoodwink him? You're not smarter than God. Sad. Sad. When I think of people trying to, like a last ditch effort, that saddens me. Again, that one line, it, it's chilling to me. They're doing all kinds of fancies, talking and talking. We don't know each other. But, 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 I don't know you. Lord Jesus, please let, the, let that not be true of anybody who's here today, anybody who's watching online. I pray, Lord, that none of us hear those words. We're buddies, Jesus. Been on your team the whole time. You just didn't know it. I never knew you. Sobering, chilling, and sad. You know, it's interesting how the timing of things works. Because I planned this series months and months ago, this, and just this past week, just this week, I had a conversation with someone about some of the stuff that we're talking about this morning. So interesting how God works out the timing of things. Now, I've had these kind of conversations on, on more than a couple of occasions, and sometimes I'll hear things like this. Yeah, Dan, I, I know that Jesus, that's, that's, but my situation is different. Yeah, Dan, Jesus, yeah, Jesus, that's a good idea, but, but I'm not really the Jesus kind of person. Yeah, I, I know, Dan, yeah, Jesus, and, and I, I, he's a good guy and all that, but I, it's probably a little too late for me. I've traveled a certain path. I get this kind of thing from I've traveled a certain path in my life, and it's probably not possible for me anymore. And you know what we want to say to people when they tell us that? Mm -hmm. Turn to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Turn to Jesus. Yeah, but I, turn to Jesus. I'm not a religious person. He, he'll make it as religious as you need to be. Don't worry about religion. Turn to Jesus. Call upon. I just don't know if I'm able to live that kind of... Turn. Call upon Jesus. Hey, I want to tell you something. I, you guys know this, I think, I hope, I believe, but I, I want to say it anyhow. You know what God wants? You know what he wants? Well, you say he wants a lot of things. Yeah. He, you know what God's will is for you? God's will is that you turn to him and trust in him for salvation. That's his will. 
You say, how do you know that's his will for me, Dan? Because that's what it tells us in the Bible. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, we're told this. This is not my idea. This is in the Bible. It says it's not God's will that any would perish. He doesn't want anybody in this room, anybody who's watching online, he does not want you to perish. It's not God's will that any would, that, and it goes on, it says, but that everyone would come to repentance. That's what God says, not me. God's not trying to keep you away from him. On the contrary, he's done everything he could do. He gave his son. He's done everything he could do to offer salvation to you and me. God does not dislike you. God loves you. I say this sometimes, but I still think people don't always believe it because of where they come from or whatever. God's not against you. He's for you. He's proven that. Mm -hmm. But you see, here's the deal. <laughs> we have to be willing to humble ourselves. We gotta be willing to humble ourselves and turn to Him. See, a relationship takes both sides. You understand that, right? Every relationship we've ever had, every relationship you've ever had, it has to be on both sides or there's no relationship there. We have to be willing. Sometimes the way I think of it is like this. Because of my own personality and my own problems and shortcomings and stuff, we have to be willing to step off of the throne of our own lives where we are currently reigning as ruler and lord of our lives, in our minds at least. We have to give up this self-deception, give up this fool, these foolish attempts to de deceive God, and we have to be humble enough to say, Jesus, you, you're on that throne. Not me, you are. That's hard. I keep wanting to climb back on the throne. He wants you to be saved. That's what he wants for you. Turn to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Stand, if you would, please. In the old hymnals, there were songs they were called hymns of invitation. Because you would sing them when, when you're inviting people to come to Christ. And my favorite hymn of invitation is this one. It's called Softly and Tenderly. Some of you guys remember that song? Oh, you know, Cheryl, help me sing it. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Yes. Calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's watching and waiting. Sunday and I'd be happy. Um, I want to invite you to pray a prayer with me. If you can do it honestly, if, if you feel like I can't be honest and say that then, then I, we understand, but I invite you to pray this with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I acknowledge you as Savior. I recognize that you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Lord. Not, me. Not me. I have sinned, Lord. I ask for, for your forgiveness. Make me clean. Make me holy. I call upon you. I recognize you, Jesus, as Savior and Lord. 
And now, Lord, I just pray for every person who's here, every person who's watching online. I know many of these folks, almost all of them, and I, and I know that they are trusting in you, and I rejoice in that. If there's anyone who's hesitating, if there's anyone who's, who's feeling like, I just, I don't think this is for me, I pray, Lord, that uh, Holy Spirit, that you would work right now in their hearts. We don't want anybody Please, nobody who's here, no, no one who's watching online, we don't want anyone to hear these words. Depart from me, I never knew you. Please let that not be true for any of us, Lord. And now bless these wonderful people. Bless them. May, may your love and your light shine through them everywhere they go. May we be ambassadors for you. I love them so much, Lord. And what's amazing is, I don't even know I, I, the half of how, how much you love them. May they know that's true. May we respond to your love with obedience. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless. Have a great week.